see. And now we got to talk about how to teach them. I like this quote here. Um, the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. Because it also, I mean, this is good teaching practice, but it also relates to how we need to teach the expectations. Sometimes um, we might get so busy that we have these expectations and we just, the behavior expectations, and we just give them to a student in a handbook, you know, and, um, or we, we tell them once and then, you know, expect them to kind of remember it forever. And so thinking about um, how can we step up our instructional game when it comes to behavior expectations, so that it really breathes life into them, you know, and it, and it um, makes them in the forefront of, of everybody's minds. And there's a zillion different ways that people can creatively teach the expectations. Um, but it needs to be kind of a living, breathing thing. So some tips for that when we're teaching expectations to students and introducing it to them is giving, making sure we're giving them the rationale of what we want them to do. You know, what, so really what is in it for them? How is it going to benefit them um, if they follow X, Y, Z expectations? It's going to teach them job or, or skills potentially for employment later. It might for some of our kids, it might help them clear their expulsion and return back to their community school or, you know, whatever the, the context of your program is, but making sure that they know what's in it for them. And in a lot of our sites, we talk about code switching with our students and talk about time and place context. So here at school, it's kind of like your job. And so we are trying to follow these expectations here, but in the community or with your family or friends, you'll, you might get your needs met differently. Um, and so honoring still, whether it's part of their culture or just honoring that that's part of being a kid, um, that they may still save this one set of behaviors for this context and a different set of behaviors for another. I think that's a really helpful part of the conversation when we're teaching them behavior expectations. And when we're responding to um, when expectations aren't met as well, we kind of have that theme.